Welcome everybody back to the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center here at the Graduate Center CUNY at the City University uh, in New York and uh, to another edition of uh, Siegel Talks. My name is Frank Henschke. I'm the director of the Siegel Center. Now for eight weeks, uh, we've been hosting talks with uh, theater artists, performance artists really from around the globe, from Egypt and Palestine and Taiwan, Hong Kong, Belgium, uh, uh, Germany, Italy, um, uh, Brazil, and uh, Chile, from Germany also with Remini Protocol, and um, and it is still a, a dangerous time in, in the world. We hear the devastating accounts uh, from Brazil. We had just Brazilian artists here with us uh, last uh, the last week, and uh, and still in America also, we do not know what the future holds. Close to a hundred thousand death and, uh, and uh, shops still are not all open in New York City for another month. Everything will be closed. The country is slowly opening up and we do not know what it really means. Nobody knows fully what's right and wrong is a time of uncertainty and um, um, something artists often had to deal with. Artists who had their uh, ears uh, close uh, to, to, to the ground but also to the future anticipating the future and the sense of Rancière, what he always uh, teaches us. And um, they have been on the right side of progress, of justice. And, uh, and this is why it is important for us to listen to them now, to hear what they go through and to ask them to share um, experiences. Um, we have a, a very special guest today, which is uh, Thomas Oberender from Berlin, who is the at the Berlin Festspiele, where he overlooks the great museum, the modern museum, the Kropius Bau, actually done by Walter Kropius's father, um, the great Bauhaus architect. And uh, he creates the uh, Immersion Festival, uh, which is uh, looking uh, to find new forms, uh, how to present intermedia, transmedia. And anyway, in the big idea, the Berlin Festspiele is always looking for new formats for performance, literature, cultural programs, and he creates what he calls time-based exhibitions. Um, this theme of our talks here at the Siegel in this moment of real crisis, and uh, Milo Rao said it's a tragedy, Richard Schechner said it's a farce because at least in a tragedy you have great leaders, great opponents, um, and this farcical tragedy, although it was it, um, um, we need new forms, and Brecht was the one who said new times need new forms of theater. And um, this is a time where we are looking for them, finding them together. And, uh, and uh, Thomas, um, I think, um, it has his uh, eyes and ears close to what's happening in Germany, also in Europe. Yesterday, we had Richard Foreman, who, who talked about his work about over the decades uh, and uh, how he uh, felt that his work already uh, had an impact that uh, had answers for a creation of work that helps us perhaps to find meaning in this complicated time. So um, now we go uh, to Thomas, who is also a playwright. He's also a playwright, a writer. He's a thinker, an atheist, uh, essayist, maybe also atheist. I don't know. And uh, and uh, and uh, uh, Thomas, yeah. And um, so he really is one of the leading. Uh, uh, figures, curators in Europe, especially, of course, in Berlin, where he has the great Berlin Festspiele. They do the theater treffen, the theater meetings, the film Festspiele, the jazz festival, and, of course, the Corpus. So, Thomas, after my long introduction, um, welcome. Where are you right now, and what time is it? It's six o'clock in the evening, and uh, I'm sitting in my living room, and I'm really happy to be connected with you in New York. and. Uh, Yes, it's a great pleasure and honor that you invited me. Well, thanks, thanks for, for, for having you. You were the director of the drama of the Salzburg Festspiele Europe, create the Berlin Festspiele. Uh, how does it feel for you to be in a home, in, a, in your apartment? <laughs> uh, today is a holiday, so it's uh, nobody is working except uh, people with uh, running restaurants and cafes because uh, they could open since uh, this week. Uh, and also our exhibition hall is opened uh, in this week. But uh, for me, it feels fine. It feels like in all the days <laughs> of the lockdown, uh, this six or seven weeks, uh, we have been 
uh, yes, most of us have been locked in our homes. Um, it, it was, uh, from the professional perspective, a very sometimes sad time because uh, many projects we did have to cancel. Uh, our festival for contemporary music, maths music, uh, um, the corona crisis uh, was so early uh, before we start the festival that we had no chance chance to change the program to go into the internet or to do something alternative. So it's, it was uh, just, uh, um, yeah, it was just uh, postponed for the next year, more or less. And uh, of course, also some exhibitions we cannot open under these circumstances, uh, and they are also postponed. So of course, uh, it's a lot of trouble, but uh, I think the the biggest trouble is uh, the situation of the artists themselves. Uh, that's something different from us who are uh, in an institution that is, uh, I would say, a stable uh, situation for all the employees. But uh, if you are a freelance artist uh, or technician, then it's a hard time. Yeah. So, but uh, can you go out now? Can you, you said the uh, restaurants are open. It, six or seven weeks you were had to be at home and now it's it's open again or everybody can go out? everything is open except theaters uh they also started uh the soccer uh, uh um, league yeah uh, league again uh, but uh, without audience uh also the concert halls are locked down uh the opera houses are locked down but the exhibition uh, houses and the museums are open, uh, strictly regulated uh, by the law. Uh, so every visitor has to have a space for 50 square meters for himself. Uh, we have to wear masks. Uh, so there's a lot of regulation about it, but uh, it feels like uh, the restart of, let's say, the normal life, more or less. Also on the That's street, so uh, the air was so clean. Uh, there was no pollution. There was uh, a long time of, uh, let's say, uh, not so much noise in the city, empty streets. Uh, this was sometimes depressing. Sometimes it was wonderful because uh, you see the clear sky. Uh, all the dirt was disappeared for this time the dirt uh, in the air, uh, um, this comes back now also. <laughs> hmm. So 50 square meters in the museum is about 150 square feet. So it's a huge space. So you only let in a very small amount of people in the Kropius bar, for example, or you number of people. Yeah, you have to buy, you have to buy a time slot for your visit. So um, that's the way how we can regulate uh, the number of visitors. And uh, yes, there is a special system of leading or guiding the visitors uh, through the exhibition rooms. Uh, so nobody can go back his way, it's all, only one direction, one exit. Um, yeah, but uh, I think uh, it's also a special experience. Uh, it's, not, it's not the way we want to have it all the time, but uh, I think, you come very close to the the art itself, uh, and it is um, silent and uh, uh, slow circumstances of your own uh, visit and encounter uh, with the with the art. Yeah, so it's a new choreography in a way. It's a linear move through an exhibition, and in a certain time you choose, and you are alone with it and uh and yeah, that's strange uh, because usually of course uh exhibitions uh, if you understand them as a kind of format or ritual is a very liberal format uh, you are controlling your way you are controlling the time you spend uh, on every place it's completely the uh, opposite of the ritual of theater in which uh, you can't control uh, 
what's going on. The time is controlled by the action on stage. But in the exhibition, you control the time. You control your way through uh, all this uh, environment uh, who are waiting, who are arranged for you. And uh, this is, of course, now a very limited liberal uh, situation, uh, but still, of course, easier to handle than the theater situation. Yeah, so it's a new social choreography and reception in mm -hmm. a way of art. Thomas, I know you're, you're a writer, you're a thinker, you, you um, are so engaged with your essays. So how do you, how did you personally, how did you experience these six or seven weeks in your, in your home? I have to say, uh, I feel splitted. Uh, there is one half of my personality that is constantly working for my institution. So, uh, and the experiences of this person are different from the other person who is, let's say, a citizen, a human being that is locked in, uh, that is uh, thinking about the change around me and the, the change inside of me. Uh, I think it, uh, I compare it for me as a period, period of transformation, like making a diet uh, or something like this. Uh, that is always not only a physical experience, it's also a spiritual experience and change if you do something like this. And uh, sometimes I think it's, uh, it's a diet for our whole society, uh, this lockdown. Uh, with all the good effects also of a diet, uh, cleaning yourself from so many things who are harmful. Um, and I would say for, for a while you are changed by this experience. Uh, the other person on the institution is uh, very busy, much more busy I expected to be uh, with uh, troubleshooting. Uh, the whole time uh, we have to react on a complicated situation. All the um, all our uh, associates uh, and uh, collaborators are uh, now forced to work uh, at home. Uh, we have to we have to handle this situation of. Uh, changing the programs of our festival, changing the programs of the exhibition hall, changing the contracts, uh, making the negotiation with the public, with the audience, uh, with the politicians. Uh, so it's a quite busy time at the same time if, uh, if you are uh, frozen. <laughs> so uh, personally, I would say, uh, it's the first time in my life in which I feel I connected with the whole world because we are all touched from this problem. We are all dealing with the same uh, challenge, uh, how we can manage this uh, dangerous uh, situation. We are forced to improve the way we working, with the way we living. We are surprised by so many things we, we did absolutely not expect. Uh, we are all impressed by uh, Greta Thunberg, but suddenly the whole world did what she was uh, asking for. Uh, overnight, no airplanes. Uh, overnight, we started to think about our um, relation to resources, uh, our lifestyle, we asked about the future in a new way. And uh, I do it in a personal sense, but I do it in the same way as one of billions of people who have the same question. Uh, uh, and sometimes I, I'm, I'm afraid of the, the end of the lockdown because uh, for me, it was a very uh, precious time. Uh, and I think also for the society, it's a very, hard and for many people a time of suffering and losing a lot of comfort and security and uh, painful. Uh, 
especially on a, on a professional level. Uh, but in the same time, I think we are all changed by this experience. What changed most for you? This is also a question uh, for me as a person. I would mm -hmm. say it's a different answer from <laughs> society or... Uh, as a person, I would say it changed my relation to my own body, how I use the time I have. Uh, I appreciate much more the living with the people I love and I feel close to them, especially my wife, of course, but uh, also family in general, but also really good friends. Um, but basically, I think it's a relation to myself that's uh, a bit different from the time before. Uh, I started to practice things. Uh, I have never time, I did have not time before. Uh, mostly time is an excuse uh, for something different, but uh, I think all the people I see on Zoom conferences are look much more healthy now. Most of them. Uh, I know that there is this uh, also this problem with uh, violence at home, and uh, so it's not everything easy <laughs> uh, in the world uh, in, under these circumstances. But at the same time, it's uh, I feel personally it's a great offer of uh, mm, questioning uh, what is normal. Uh, how we how we use our resources, and this is uh, in the first uh, line a personal question, and, and and then it starts to become interesting how the society and how artists and uh, I, I start to read different books and uh, have another. Um, I am appreciating much more writers uh, or thinkers. I felt never so close before. So th this, uh, my taste is also maybe a bit changed. Uh, and I feel that uh, this period of, let's say, it's, a, it's, a, it's interim. It's a very short period in which, let's say, the old rules are suspended. And uh, nobody knows exactly how, it, how can we go on. Uh, what, is, what is the most important thing right now? Everything is uh, different. People... Yeah, I, I was surprised how yeah, the, the solidarity amongst the people. Uh, I think personally, I'm very proud uh, about our society, how we managed to be transparent and uh, uh, careful with each other uh, on the political level in Germany and maybe in Europe in general. Uh, it's, it was not the same thing like in China, that everything was uh, uh, imprisonated and uh, under control. It was, it was in a way, everything was a kind of debate about every decision. And this was, I liked that very much. Mm. And you said you will, the, the change that happened to you or the slight difference to to look at the world, which one experiences. You think also in art and society, in there will there be changes in Germany? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I think I'm from East Germany, and uh, I needed a very long time to appreciate the revolution we have made in 1989 because the period of the revolution was so short and all the trouble afterwards was so big and intense uh, that it needed, in my case, 25 years to understand the huge gift of this uh, period of uh, revolution in which uh, the old socialist country was not 
completely disappeared and the new uh, Western society and uh, politics and the new state was not established. In this interim, uh, there was a huge mass of ideas and initiatives, uh, how we can change society, how we can develop a different constitutional law, how we can uh, change uh, the law for the environment, how we can to protect the environment, how we can change our understanding of work. Uh, it was everything very important, uh, but also very, let's say, fragile. And uh, I think it was a time in which I felt that um, people are clever. People are really, you can trust the intelligence of the people. Uh, they know what's good for them. And um, of course, history, after this very short period of revolution changed in a way. And uh, um, today, if you ask me if the Me Too uh, debate, if uh, the uh, Arabic Spring, Occupy uh, Wall Street, all these initiatives, uh, all these movements, many people say they failed. But in the end, what they did is they changed completely our understanding what is normal, what is uh, the basic understanding or rule of our time. Uh, so the relation to uh, women, uh, the behavior of men, uh, the question of uh, diversity and uh, all this post-colonial uh, uh, development, I think is an effect of these revolutions. And so I think we don't know on which level this very short interim of the Corona Ausnahmezustand uh, yeah, um, uh, was um, um, uh, with this time of exception. Or, um, yeah, yeah, this time so. of, there is, a, there is a heuristic term for that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nobody knows how we, uh, how we are changed by this experience. For me, I can say it's not normal anymore to fly to New York to meet a person for three hours. Impossible. Uh, I would say also, I start to rethink our system of uh, making exhibitions. All these creators who are traveling around the world and go shopping in institutions, bring something at home that was will be delivered by uh, huge transport uh, systems uh, just to be presented in the showcase for eight weeks or three months. All this is a very luxury uh, behavior. Um, I, I see the nece uh, it's necessary, of course, uh, in the way how our institutions are working now. I see it is, uh, is necessary for many artists to go on tour, to travel. Uh, but I think uh, we have a second view on this phenomenon now. We remember how a bright sky looks, especially if you remember this uh, photographs on the satellites over northern Italy, uh, mm -hmm. when you suddenly uh, see the landscape and not the smog. Uh, we experienced uh, that so many things are possible who seems to be seem to be impossible. Uh, uh, that I think uh, this gives us also some arguments to think about an economy under the conditions of degrowing. Uh, uh, so I think uh, there is a generation that will remember this break. This, you know, the, the virus pressed the pause button. And in this pause, we made so many experiences, also bad experiences about. Uh, we are not equal in the society, of course. We see it very clear, like in a catastrophe, you see who are uh, privileged, 
people and who are not privileged people. You see all uh, the fragility of civilization. You see, yeah, you see uh, Bruno Latour uh, uh, called, uh, called it, uh, the critical zone. It's this uh, 10 meters uh, of earth in the ground and 10 meters over the ground. This zone inhabits all the life. And this is so fragile. It's so, you understand that this, uh, we can, we can, uh, we cannot go on with, uh, um, with this planet in the way we, we did before. I think for me, this is a, a very a deep understanding that uh, become more profound by this uh, Corona experience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is all, that is this something actually serious and not a, just a theoretical reflection, something we, with our bodies, as you mentioned, the body we experienced. Yeah, also, uh, if you think about the experience of many artists, uh, uh, Florentina Holzinger, she's a dancer and choreographer. She said, um, or more, she, she's more a choreographer. Uh, she, she said, um, you feel, of course, how, how important the relation to the body on stage is for your work. And if there is no stage, if there's no audience that is locked in the situation of the classical theater, uh, um, then you feel also very clear what you are missing in this Corona uh, circumstances. Uh, it's not possible to bring that kind of experience into the digital world. Um, I think this is also a very um, important understanding that comes from our experience of the lockdown, uh, that so many things are not, uh, cannot be transported into the uh, virtual reality of uh, the digital media. Um, also nud nudity, nudity is so important for her work and, uh, but it's so complicated uh, in the internet uh, um, in, in, let's say uh, our times, they are so regulated and uh, also of course uh, the internet is so regulated uh, that many artworks you can present in the theater are not possible to be broadcasted uh, in the internet. Uh, so it's not always the liberal space. Uh, it's, uh, I think in general, it's, it's not, it's over uh, since a long time. Um, but for many people uh, in the art world, it's also no alternative to their work. Florentina Holzinger, for example, said, uh, I don't like that you come by and go how you want. I love it that uh, theater is such a um, vintage medium. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you want to make an experience, if you want to have this encounter with a production, uh, you're locked in the situation. <laughs> you, can't, uh, you can't have it just for a moment. You, uh, you stay uh, in the situation for a long time. And this is the ritual. And uh, I, I'm personally also missing this situation. So, uh, I love to observe uh, performers and uh, their physical reality uh, on stage. And uh, very often I have the feeling in the internet, if, if I see a recording of a performance, uh, I see the, the things I don't like so much, uh, uh, even in a bigger scale. Uh, and uh, sometimes also the things I love, but uh, Mostly, I, I think uh, um, I appreciate more the, the shared experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of uh, uh, forces us to, to, to uh, really uh, confront or see what's, what's there and what is, what is not there. We cannot choose. It's no longer 
uh, something we can do and something um, one of our um, uh, Amir from uh, Yafa in uh, Palestine who said uh, that uh, perhaps for the Western world it's one of the first times that you experience an uncertainty, that it is not clear what will happen, that it is not safe, that the world is not safe, something that is for our fellow artists in Chile or in Lebanon, in Africa, where 400,000 people die of malaria each year, where you can yeah. catch malaria every day. And most of the time you get it, you don't die from it, they, everybody has it. So it is a, a, a new factor that has been- um, Only in Jill for us. You say again? Uh, that is only new for us. Very yeah. often. A, a very good friend of mine said, uh, um, uh, you, uh, Ibu Diop, um, he said, for many people in Africa, it's quite normal that they can't go from one country to another. Uh, that they don't get a visa and uh, this is not uh, easy for them. Uh, and now we experience the same situation that it's not easy to go from one country to another, maybe first time in, in our life. For me, it was uh, when I grew up in East Germany, it was quite ordinary uh, experience to be locked down behind mm -hmm. the iron curtain so uh, you see you see connections between the lockdown now and your growing up question. and touring mm -hmm. uh, i see i see uh, i see a connection but more let's say uh, in the period of the interim uh, let's say in the revolution, uh, in the period of revolution and the lockdown, there is a, in this openness, uh, it's uh, uh, in this situation of uncertainty. Uh, the other level would be to say, okay, now the, the, all the Germans make the same, same experiences. Uh, uh, we did last time in 1989. Uh, when everybody is uh, uh, dealing with the same issue, uh, now it's the corona, uh, and uh, 30 years ago it was the opening of the uh, wall, and everything was changed by that for most of the Germans, um, especially, of course, the East Germans. But uh, uh, if I think about uh, the living in behind the walls, uh, I would say, uh, you get another understanding of uh, the control systems. Um, that's why we think so much about uh, data security now. And of course, in, in, in East Germany, uh, behind the wall, uh, in all these Eastern countries, uh, the public was not a uh, safe space. Uh, the public was always observed, was always dangerous, was always something that is observing you. Uh, and uh, you learn to be caref careful. So it's the same what you learn now if you go into the internet, you learn to be careful. Uh, you know you're observed, you know you're, uh, let's say, we are feeding the platforms, we are feeding the artificial intelligence with our behavior. We are, let's say, the teachers for the artificial intelligence. Uh, that's everything we do. If we speak right now, they listen to us uh, and they become a better, they, the machines become better in understanding in the literary sense. And uh, so we, we are teaching uh, now the system in the same way how we did teach in East Germany uh, the Secret Service uh, with every book we wrote, with every conversation we had, and there was a microphone nearby. Uh, <laughs> hmm. It's a sinister uh, uh, comparison, comparison, but uh, there is one. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is that is quite interesting. And what other artists do you follow? Do you <laughs> think at the moment, uh, 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 like the choreographer you mentioned, who do you feel um, is making observations in 
in the Berlin European context, you, you, uh, who do you follow at the moment in this time of Corona? There are some things very uh, successful. Uh, Christopher Rüping is a uh, interesting director who produced the uh, internet uh, serial of uh, monologues, uh, according to film of Kislovsky, um, Decalogue. This was a huge success, uh, I would say, in the internet community. Uh, it's from the Schauspielhaus Zürich. And I think uh, this was one of the few examples uh, what you can do on a regular state theater with your ensemble, if you have a director who is uh, able to improvise under the circumstances with actors and all the security um, circumstances uh, and to produce an interesting artwork. Uh, also uh, in a new way, because the audience is involved in the process of uh, the piece. Uh, it can make a decision in the end uh, of the production and uh, the actor will react on the vote of the audience. So this was something that uh, surprised me and uh, but honestly uh, there are more the writers I'm interested in right mm -hmm. now or the history. Um, mm, Julian Beck is interesting for me right now, The Living Theater. Uh, I did read his uh, essays or poems or thoughts uh, again. Uh, I'm of course very involved in this whole uh, Bruno Latour cosmos. Uh, this is the next project uh, we are developing. Tell us uh, a bit about it, Mayu, mm -hmm. if you can. Uh, Tino Segal and uh, the team of the immersion uh, program and also, of course, myself, we have been very impressed by a book of Bruno Latour. Um, uh, the, the English title is Down to Earth. Uh, in Germany, it's uh, Das Terrestrische Manifest. And this is a book uh, that is at the same time, let's say, a, a theoretical um, statement or manifesto and at the same time a, a political initiative. It was written in 1917. And uh, I think Bruno Latour wanted to give a political, uh, or let's say, a, a tool for a political movement uh, that is helpful to overbridge traditional uh, conflicts uh, to unify the people for the aim of changing, um, uh, let's say, the structure of our society, basically. Uh, um, and the structure, let's say, of the system of the sciences of our time. Um, I think he has a, uh, a deep understanding of the, mm, the great turn uh, we are in right now. Um, for him, the climate change uh, is something that is crucial. It's, uh, we know if we, if we fail uh, to, yeah, to slow down this whole process um, and to hold it under this uh, two um, degree, um, level. Um, the next generations have a big problem um, and we will damage seriously the whole system of Gaia. And our project is to develop, let's say, an exhibition, but it's not only an exhibition. Um, it's also a kind of camp uh, in the Kropius Bar in which we say, okay, it's all about climate change, but usually we collect artworks and we hang them on the wall or we present them as a kind of film and we trust in the narration of the objects and so on. 
but we're never um, asking about the system behind uh, the making of the exhibition. Uh, that's what I mentioned before. We are never asking about the system of our own institution. Uh, what kind of electricity we are using? Where does it come from? Uh, why do we have um, uh, this uh, 20 uh, grad Celsius uh, mm -hmm. uh, temperature in every in every room? Why do we? Why it's not allowed to open windows in a museum? Uh, uh, why it's not uh, possible to bring living earth into a museum? I don't know if you know that earth in the museum is always three days cooked before you can bring it in. <laughs> they kill everything that is alive on Earth if you want to bring Earth mm -hmm. in the museum. So if you're starting uh, to uh, questioning uh, all the circumstances who are the basic level of producing uh, exhibitions, uh, it becomes very interesting if you make the opposite decision. So we are starting now to prepare an exhibition in which we uh, bring nothing that is uh, related to electricity. So there is no beamer, no microphone, no loudspeaker, uh, no spot. Uh, there's only the daylight. Uh, there are only analog uh, instruments. Uh, we are inviting experts, experts of change, also the experts of their own institution, Tino Segal, uh, made a, and all my other colleagues, uh, we, we made a great uh, research uh, about our own climate system. How does it work? Uh, why it's necessary, isn't it? Is it really necessary? So what we change is uh, the whole situation in which you experience art and, uh, and uh, let's say, the situation of a group of people on the same place. Um, so we did this a long time before Corona. We, uh, we decided to, or we started to prepare this exhibition uh, one and a half year ago. And we have to, now we have had to postpone it uh, to August. Uh, but it's interesting that we really try for some weeks to offer a completely different awareness of how can a situation in an institution like an exhibition hall be constructed if you slow down everything, if you uh, don't amplify anything, if you uh, can have an encounter with real people who are experts, who are shamans, who are people who make urban gardening or who develop different concepts for housing. And um, of course, we invited artists uh, who give uh, concerts or uh, performances uh, uh, who are dealing with this um, climate change um, um, issue, but uh, not in a way that, uh, that they give explanations. Um, they, uh, they invite us to, to join, let's say, a situation that is created uh, for us uh, in a very intimate way. Of course, now in a much more intimate way, uh, <laughs> we wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. um, to change the way things are, as you said, and to find new ways, do you feel that then the art world or the visual art world are a step ahead of theater and performance? Is that also thinkable that, as you said, to slow down or to, will that be, will that have an effect on the theater and performance scene in Berlin and, or in Europe? Do you think there will be changes? We will see. It's, uh, for me, it's a big, uh, nobody knows that. Uh, I think uh, we all wish in a way that artists can have the way of uh, presentation they are already uh, used to uh, again right now, uh, very soon. Uh, in the same time, I think um, 
we all know there is a good way of globalization and there is a bad way of globalization. Uh, and I think our, we appreciate much more the, the resources we have, uh, the international resources we have, and artists who are based in Berlin. Uh, uh, I think we start to, to understand how important it is that we, um, we use what we have. Uh, it's also the question, for example, how important is it that everything is original? The whole exhibition system is uh, um, based on this idea of an original thing. What, is, what does it mean? Uh, to question, uh, yeah, we start to, 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 to ask about uh, this kind of parameter. And in the same time, of course, it's a, it's a big, uh, it's very dangerous to uh, build up new walls and to say, okay, we, we, are, we are going strictly local because there are so many artists. Uh, uh, if you think about the situation in Hungary or in Poland, uh, they have a really big fear that we don't invite them anymore. And uh, that many countries say, okay, we, uh, we don't have any more the resources to invite uh, other artists and companies and orchestras as we did it before, before the crisis. So, but also sometimes uh, it's uh, maybe for ideological reasons. Uh, so we have to take care um, that this effect, um, that we avoid this effect of a new kind of blockade. And at the same time, we have to change our awareness of um, the resources who are um, nearby. Mm -hmm. I know you think a lot also about, about spaces or public spaces or spaces for art in a 21st century to redefine them. You think about planetariums or um, uh, new, new, new halls, new ways. Um, of course, we have the shed in New York with other people trying to create spaces. What, what do you see is happening in Berlin? And what, do you, what would you dream about? What do you think would really work? What would you like to, to present the work in the hybrid forms of arts. You present theater, you present film, you present exhibitions, music, so. Um, Richard Foreman uh, said last uh, night uh, that he appreciates the, um, the low scale, uh, um, scale. Uh, scale uh, events. No? So I think, uh, there's so much uh, true about that. Uh, in the same time, our tradition is uh, the big hall, the big stage uh, in Germany. And uh, I think um, I think uh, we have to we have to open the use. For, of these infrastructures for things we never invited before. So there's no theater in Germany that invites contemporary circles. Uh, there is no, uh, there's no structure to, to help the circus the, uh, people. Uh, there is uh, for a long time no uh, dance theater that is uh, uh, based in a regular theater system. Um, I think uh, this old way of presenting things from above to down uh, to the silent audience uh, should be open for offers of uh, feedback uh, for, let's say, different art forms uh, and for, yeah, open for other uh, other actors uh, of uh, performing arts. And I think uh, what Bruno Latour is doing, uh, he's, he's developing theater formats uh, in which he teaches, he gave speeches, and at the same time it's uh, what uh, Frederick is uh, directing. It's a kind of epic theater uh, 
for me, it's very close to the expert uh, theory of Rimini protocol. I think we should open for uh, this other um, uh, fields of competences uh, and bring them much more uh, often into the theaters. Um, and I think also we should uh, exchange much more between the theaters. Uh, we have this original, this thinking of original based in one place uh, production. And I think we should open that for more exchange in the system. Uh, in general, I think uh, we are in the middle of something, I would say that is uh, the turn from the analog to the digital age. And uh, it doesn't mean that we have to bring theater into the internet, but the internet is for a long time uh, in, uh, in, in the theater world. Uh, the digital uh, culture, uh, that is culture of feedback, it's a culture of real time, is so important for the younger generation and uh, they are all used to play games. They, are, they have a completely different understanding of uh, the material of a character or a figure, uh, the way of narration, uh, contemporary ways of narration. Um, their understanding of what is real or what is reality is so different from uh, this old tradition of uh, um, literal theater. Um, I think uh, this is the beginning of something that is, uh, nobody knows uh, to what kind of aesthetic it will lead. Uh, I'm very, very, very impressed by the work of Susanna Kennedy. She is, uh, she's one of the directors I'm, I'm learning so, so much uh, from every production. Every production of her uh, is going one step, uh, one radical step into something that is new. That is an encounter of the digital uh, world and the, uh, the old spiritual world. Uh, and I think this is also something that uh, the Corona time uh, made clear that uh, there is another world beside that uh, modern uh, enlightened world. There is a world of uh, different concept of the world. Uh, there is a another kind of philosophy of uh, care, of healing, of uh, uh, different medicine, <laughs> everything uh, that is not so appreciated uh, by the established uh, system, but uh, is not so toxic uh, as the established uh, ways of uh, uh, yeah, our economy and uh, our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So you think that we will be able to encounter worlds that were there, but we were not able to see? Yeah. Where are the animals on stage? Where are the plants on stage? There are only rare artists who uh, gave the other species a voice or a, a representation. Uh, if you remember this theater of landscapes of uh, Robert Wilson uh, in Persepolis or uh, uh, this huge, uh, yes, uh, how he produced uh, art with landscape, with the sky, with the rocks, with the light, uh, with the environment, a uh, long time ago in the 70s. Uh, this is for me still promising. Uh, I think uh, there is a new generation that brings this other forces on stage. Uh, I see that in the work of uh, Max Stewart. I see that in the work of Maria Scaroni. I, I see it in uh, so many contemporary artists work, uh, but I don't see it in the, sometimes I see it also in play, uh, in, in plays, not so often, but uh, sometimes. And uh, so I start to become very interested in writers uh, who uh, find narrations, who find uh, constellations in text that bring these other uh, forces on stage. Uh, it's not only the dead, uh, it's also really 
the non-human species. Yeah? Mm -hmm. what, what writers do you follow, you said? So it's a return to writing, perhaps, that this digital time uh, forces us to, and uh, Corona to reading and writing, or as Bart said, write, reading actually is writing, yeah, because you read it and you create it. But who are you following when you say the writers? Um, also, you mentioned that earlier, you read a lot. There is a, there are many plays, or some plays, not so many. Um, Carol Churchill wrote a play about a war between the species, between the wind and the trees and the bees and the grass and the humans. Uh, I never forget it. Uh, I saw it 20 years ago, I would say, right now. Uh, there are plays by Roland Schimmelpfennig. Uh, who wrote about animals uh, or humans as animals, um, who brought uh, the god back on stage uh, in his Iliad play. Or last, uh, really big discovery of the corona time are uh, the short stories of Paul Bowles. Mm -hmm. he, is, uh, he brings me to New York. He's a New York guy who went in the 30s to Tang Tangier in Morocco. And he was, he is really a very interesting character in this time because he was so interested in, let's say the native culture, uh, not to say the indigenous, but the, the native culture of the people of the Moroccan people who hasn't been so uh, acknowledged and appreciated in this time. In the end of his lifetime, he was, uh, he really collected their music. Uh, he collected also their stories. He paid for that and he, he uh, organized uh, field recordings. He went to the villages and the mountains uh, to collect their, their music and stories. And uh, at the same time, in his own story, uh, it's a bit close to William Burroughs. He, he's very open to, let's say, drug-based experiences uh, who are really close to the beliefs of the people there uh, uh, about the different rationality, uh, different power of plants and uh, holy persons. Uh, and he wrote very good uh, stories about the conflict or the blind blindness of uh, the Western people who are uh, surrounded by this culture and have no really contact and no really develop no understanding of their different uh, coordinates. So uh, he's a, he was a composer. He wrote music for theater for Tennessee Williams. He wrote uh, opera. Uh, he wrote an opera and also opera music for uh, Garcia Lorca. Uh, it's a huge continent, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's a person who steps out uh, of the Western world in a very interesting way. And at the same time, he was, of course, a legendary writer. And uh, it's a, uh, by the way, he's a writer about distance. If he say mm -hmm. uh, so much about social distancing, he's a very good uh, example for a good use of distance. Uh, distancing is also something that is a very old cultural technique. If you remember the French culture of uh, uh, the 19th or the 18th century or the 17th century, uh, distance is uh, the condition that makes it possible to come closer uh, to each other. Uh, Peter Handke said uh, he doesn't want to touch uh, his characters if, if he's writing uh, stories about them. And uh, I think this is one of the reasons why he can go so far in the introspective of these people, because he, in a way, he, he keeps distance uh, to some aspects of their life and existence. And so social distancing is uh, very meaningful for me uh, in, a, in this different sense. Uh, there, there's, of course, this German tradition of uh, Neue Sachlichkeit and uh, mm -hmm. So this uh, early Brecht attitude of being distant, mm -hmm. uh, distanced, um, and uh, this is uh, why it is so intense. Mm, how, how interesting that you 
point to Bowles, who stepped out, as you said, in the Western world, was open to see what was there additionally, also in a psychedelic or spiritual way uh, that you yeah. say, that the distancing, what we're experiencing, is actually also bringing us closer. Yeah. And uh, ways of bringing us also these kind of paradoxes of, uh, uh, of, of our existence, which we, which we experience and, uh, um, and acknowledge. Um, in this time, did you have a vision, an idea, or do you have something where you feel like, I think I might try this out? I know you, you run all these uh, places, you have the possibility to create things that become real, but the imaginary uh, and the symbolic, in a way, becomes a real uh, representation, you know, in, in rooms, um, whether or not with air conditioning. Or, uh, but uh, do you, do you, is something forming in your head that comes out of this time? Do you have a vague idea that what might be an in interest? I'm really interested in techniques of transformation. I can say it only in this very uh, general way. Um, I'm not finished with this whole uh, topic of immersion. Mm -hmm. Immersion is for me, this is also the connection to uh, Bruno Latour. Uh, it's a metaphor for the end of dialectic relations. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, this old game of uh, subject and object and uh, thesis and antithesis and uh, reason and effect. Uh, all these linear concepts uh, I don't believe in anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I'm interested in this uh, metaphor of immersion because uh, it's a way of thinking and at the same time a way of practice who is... Uh, very old and very new at the same time. Very old because I would say immersion, uh, the end of being the opposite is uh, to be in love. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you fell in love, you stop to be separated. Uh, you, the other one is you are in the other and the other is in you. It's like breathing uh, and uh, also, uh, um, this whole uh, feeling of uh, living in a constant feedback situation in which everything is fluid, uh, in which everything is a kind of construction. Uh, Thomas Metzinger is a very important uh, philosopher for me uh, mm -hmm. right now, who's uh, a researcher about the way how we create reality. So uh, by thinking um, with our brains, and um, how this is a very old concept also in, in the oldest uh, religions and uh, in, the, in the understanding of the world of the people in the Amazonas forest. Um, so this is, uh, it's not only a Western uh, uh, fashion, it's, uh, it's something that is very deep. And at the same time, of course, uh, the economy uh, goes this way of, uh, to immerse us, you know, to, to offer us ourselves by this YouTube feedback, <laughs> uh, feeding, uh, consuming, prosuming uh, structures in which uh, we are all um, not only on one side, we are on both sides all the time. That's uh, uh, the condition humaine of our time, I would say. And uh, how can we use this understanding of this situation for, to, to uh, emancipative uh, projects uh, for healing, for something that is not uh, root in the old way, that is not so formed by male thinking of uh, consuming and uh, excarving and uh, um, destroying. Um, and I feel that I'm really very much uh, in this topic of immersion. And it, it brings me to completely new fields of uh, uh, activism, 
So I'm, I'm, I'm started to become very interested in artists who are activists, basically, who don't feel that they are do objects or productions. They don't want to create things we can consume. It's not about consumerism, what they do. So I think uh, I'm more open to that in the last time. And I hope to empower people with this concept uh, uh, in our institutions. Mm -hmm. Which artists do you follow who you feel is uh, an activism as art, as part of a transformation and immersion? Uh, there are many. Um, I, would, uh, I met a, a woman from Russia, uh, Julia Strauss. Uh, she is uh, organizing uh, a worldwide indigenous assembly. She founded an academy uh, program in Athens. Uh, so education as a kind of art form. Uh, and she, uh, she's uh, really uh, involved in uh, projects that help migrants in Greece as an artist. And uh, without producing art, uh, you could bring into the market. But at the same time, uh, it's uh, the oldest uh, practice of singing, of making texts, making structures in which people can meet and articulate their understanding of their place in the world and uh, their feelings. And uh, yeah. This is one example, and uh, it's a part of our uh, project uh, down to earth. And uh, I think it's 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 not easy to to overbridge uh, the field of the institutions uh, to the field of the activists. So this is something I'm I'm starting to uh, explore. Mm, and I think. Uh... Rightfully so, you point uh, that uh, art as activism and activism as art kind of a complete refusal of this kind of neo-capitalist uh, market, whether it's in performance, theater, or arts. So this is perhaps something uh, we all have to uh, be uh, more open to support uh, also in theater and performance um, and as well as in the, in the visual arts. Um, so this is truly, truly um, fascinating and uh, significant, you know, to, to be inside uh, your, 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 your mind a bit. Thank you, you really for sharing what's, uh, what, you, what you carry with you visibly and invisibly and um, these new mindsets and your ways to, to look at the world as uh, you know, it's, we all have our own VR sets. We experience the world, we dream the world, how it is and we think this is how it is, but we fail often to really understand that already it is a construction that art is one of the few ways for us to experience and understand the multifaceted the real nature of a um, of a reality um we're coming a bit closer and maybe we should talk one day with unlimited time you know this is a <laughs> significant and i wish we had someone like you in, in new york you know to who is as you say over bridging that beautiful world word you, you create and that is bridging between you know the theater and music and uh, literature and uh, and the visual arts, the performance art, installation, what you actually do in Berlin at the Berlin Festival is so brilliantly. I don't uh, experience that in that way uh, in Manhattan. I think it's something where perhaps we are behind, uh, we, we're just so in silos next to each other. And it is a way Corona shows us now we have to experience the world in a different, perhaps also in a whole way in the Greater Thunberg in somewhere in the back of, um, of the mines. Um, what would you say, um, as a parting to young artists, so our listeners, what do, what do you feel at this time of Corona? How, is, how to use it best? Or what to so keep in mind? What, uh, what um, should we keep with us? As you said, still 25 years later, that time of transition from uh, the opening of the world, but part of a revolution, which you were part of, you were one of them, who, people demonstrating out there, talking, creating, with all the disappointments, of course, afterwards. 
Um, but um, what do you feel is of real importance now? Resist uh, to go back to the things you know too early. Uh, this is an advice to myself. Uh, I think uh, a good advice is this idea of taking it, taking this whole uh, Corona time as a as a kind of diet, a diet uh, that helps us to to clean ourselves, uh, a diet that uh, is not only physically, it's also uh, mentally and it's also social. Uh, it's not only evil to be isolated. Sometimes uh, circumstances help us uh, to, to go a step in a direction we never would go without this force. And uh, I think because Sometimes there is no other option. It's good to do useless things in this helpless time. Huh? What else can you do? So you do something you, you can't do under the regular cir circumstances. You read, uh, you, you are close to people, you feel close and uh, you learn how easy it is to be not this, this kind of consumer. And uh, um, I think this, uh, this break uh, in all our um, uh, relations is very, very important. Uh, and uh, uh, Alexei Shipenko uh, said to me, uh, not to me, he, he wrote in uh, a short text. Uh, it's on the website of the Berliner Schaubühne. Uh, he said, um, the, the world does not change. You have changed. And I think this is a, a very important uh, um, conclusion. Uh, the world really did not change. Uh, we changed, uh, hopefully. And to take, to take this... Uh, uh, massive uh, interruption uh, as a chance for for a personal change. Uh, this could be something very um, valuable for for the future. Reading, reading, uh, listen to music, uh, uh, learning to uh, ride bicycle with uh, with free hands. It's a, it's <laughs> all this uh, is helpful for the future. This is a, these are really a great, great, great recommendations. And maybe also you to look at the space between the useful and the useless, something in between, you know, what, how can that be combined? And that is what makes life life. But I think to look at the time as the diet we are in uh, as a preparation to think about once we yeah. eat again, once we will life again, um, and uh, to read and to, uh, 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 to um, to to be present, and I think you know, the idea of transformation and immersion. I mean, Pasolini said we have to throw our bodies into the lives. We have to be part of the change we want to see. And this kind of activism, I think these are is really significant hits and uh, hints you give us to uh, uh, to to think about. And you also back up with with your work at the Berlin uh, Festspiel, and it does show how significant. Uh, the role the arts plays in the representational space of the imagined and the symbolic, and that what you do in that corpus bow when you say we'll have to think about electricity, we have to think why do we do what, what can we do not, it stands for something much, much bigger. And this is also why it is so important and so critically important that we also react to a world that perhaps is very, very different from the way we have seen it um, um, all the time. So thank you so much. This was a, a brilliant contribution and the beginning of the opening up of the, of the Siegel talks, so, you know, also to, to curators, philosophers, thinkers, uh, 
and, uh, and uh, observers of, of the world. Thomas, really thank you for uh, taking the time and um, we all admire um, um, what you do um, in Berlin. And uh, hopefully maybe one day you come to New York and do something, uh, something here or take over an institution or occupy one or, or restage the Palace der Republik in New York. Who knows <laughs> uh, what it will be for. So thank you so much. And to our audience also, thank you for listening. And this is a significant time. And it's also a time where we listen closer than perhaps normally. We listen also closer to what Thomas says and uh, it is all very serious and it can save our lives and can change uh, the place where we live in, the society, the town, the community. So it is all part of, as he says, our healing, but we also have to really listen. And this is uh, uh, important um, uh, what we do. So thank you for, for being part of that community. It's all about you also, what you and the very end, how you read it and how it transfers into some kind of an action or a change. And um, it's a privilege to have you guys with us here listening. I know how much is out there, how much content is out and how busy our days are. As Thomas says, he's uh, surprised how fast the days goes. And I can only imagine how it means to run the Berlin Festspiel out of your home and with a computer and Zoom without becoming a zombie, uh, a zombie. So um, listening tomorrow, we have uh, New York, uh, playwright, performance artist Philip Housey and Giordano de la Cruz from the Jack Art Space. And they will talk how it feels, how it is for, for, for New Yorkers, for them uh, to deal with it, what ideas they have and um, what is of significance. I still remember Philip's great show and performance. He did at our Prelude Festival. So uh, they will be of interest and uh, tune in for next week um, where we will have um, a new list of artists that uh, will be uh, will be with us from Barcelona and Bogart, uh, from uh, from Hong Kong again, and, and, and other places. So uh, thank you uh, for, um, for for staying with us. Thanks to uh, HowlRound for hosting us, Thea, VJ, and Travis, the Siegel team, uh, Andy and Sanyang, and again Thomas. Thank you uh, for coming, and how how wonderful to to hear this. Uh, perspective uh, of an arts institution that in a way is also it's run by artists and uh, and curated and administered by it. So it's a fantastic uh, uh, um, contribution you made and uh, so, so thoughtful and uh, sensible. And I think also very, very much close to that feeling of a, of a, of a corona and what possibilities it opens us. Of course, we don't have the existential uh, crisis as our African colleagues or what we heard from Brazil or Chile and others. Um, but also this is our reality and everyone experiences this moment in a different way and we showing the facets of it. So thank you again. Uh, thanks for listening. And Thomas, uh, hope to see you back in Berlin soon and come, come to New York one day, maybe more than for the three hours for one talk <laughs> as a curator, but uh, Maybe your festival can dream up a collaboration with uh, New York institutions. All the best, and I can't wait to listen more and know more and experience the Latour project. Bye bye.